Hello and welcome back to Buckle Up. I'm Harry King and this is the Kia Soul EV. And what car think it's the best small electric SUV of 2022? I'm not sure it's even an SUV, but let's see what it's like. Right, so let's get started at the front where uh, I'm going to talk about the lights first. So you've got these lovely, slim, high-level headlights with this lovely DRL here. This is where you'll find both the high and the low beams. These huge expanses of glass house the indicators and the front fog lights. Over on this side, you've got the charge port door. You do have to push it rather firmly to get it open, but once it's open, you'll find you've got your standard charger set up in there. Otherwise, on the front of this car, you've got this faux light bar here this doesn't illuminate but it carries through the sort of slim and stylish look of the high level lights on the car you've also got this bumper splittery front guard thing to try and make you think this is more off-roady than it is it looks nice though it balances out the front of this car then you've got an incredibly flat bonnet and then continuing on from this you get a rather upright windscreen for this size of car and just a very boxy shape. It's a, it's a neat styling trick, because what you've done is you've taken what could just be a bland MPV uh, crossover or hatchback and turned it into something that's really unique and interesting stylistically, and it lets you call it an SUV for marketing purposes. And people like SUVs because they're not very bright. So continuing to move down the vehicle, you've got this low-level cladding, which makes it, again, look a bit more SUV-y. You've got a contrast roof with nice silver low-level roof bars and then i like this got the word soul just written here right then so lastly the back you've got soul again in a different color that one was sort of turquoise this one's sort of orangey red thing and the car's blue how fun also here you've got kia's number one humble brag a seven-year warranty quality redefined so I'll open up the boot, the boot lid because of the, i find the door handle first, um, the boot lid because of the very bluff design of the back of this vehicle is quite long, so you'll just have to consider that if you're in a tight parking space up against a wall or something, you'll want to watch that. Now, moving into the boot, what we've got in here is 315 litres of space, which is really rather good, and you've got a fancy parcel shelf, like one in a Range Rover. So you fold it over like that. Nice. The subwoofers at the back, Harman Kardon, I'll get more onto the sound system later. And these are the rails for the false floor. So if this is too much of a lip for you, you can see it's about the depth of my hand. You can lift this up where you'll see all of the exciting charging stuff underneath. I'm going to pop this up here, slide it back. And suddenly you have a sort of continuous load floor where there's barely any loading lip at all. Speaking of the stuff under here, You've got your granny charging cable for if you want to charge at home on the three pin socket. And then this is all your spare tire stuff. Now, let's see if the uh, parcel shelf will fit under the boot floor. Oh, it does. Good marks for Kia. We won't have to throw that through a hedge or something. There are some tie down hooks on the floor. Obviously, the floor moves. Uh, and there aren't even any curry hooks or any 12 volt sockets back here. The seats themselves fold down and that's easy to reach from this part of the vehicle. And then you'll have over 1,300 litres of space. Let's see if I can lift these up from back here. So you pop the seatbelt in there. If you can see that at all, wherever you are, there you are. Look, seatbelt clip, and then I just reach in, use the ice fix tethering point, put the seat back up. Lovely stuff. Now, speaking of the rear seats, let's go sit in them. Okay, so here we are in the back seats. Um, first things first, I don't have quite enough knee room behind my driver's seat. Now this, the footprint of this car is sort of super mini sized. So that's not really unexpected for me. Um, and they probably prioritized a little bit more boot space than rear leg room. Really, this will be more suited for children. On that, you do get Isofix and you don't have any irritating clips to get off. You just stick it through the seat. Headroom though is excellent. Uh, even Rob fits in here, sat fully upright. And I've got loads of acres above. Um, and in, behind a shorter driver, I'd also be fine. The seats themselves are very comfortable. You've got this perforated leather 
they're nice and soft they seem to have a decent amount of side to side uh, support so lots of plus marks in here just maybe not suited for taller adults practicality wise you've got a charger down here in the center you've got a seat back pocket but only on the back of the passenger seat and you also have uh, door pockets with a sort of bottle holder in them though that's all you'd be fitting in there if you do decide to put a bottle down you also got electric windows and thanks to the shape of the door they go all the way down you gotta love that haven't you right that's everything in the back seats what's it like up front right so then here in the front number one much more leg room um the interior of this car is really rather nice nicer than i was expecting um this the sort of sister car to this car is the kona ev where you can feel where they've made some um cost decisions uh, on the interior in order to make the drivetrain affordable in here it's much harder to tell you've got soft touch up on the dashboard nice materials on the steering wheel soft touch down here and here where my arms go the center console is a nice material nice and sturdy as well it's all very well done as with all modern cars you have a huge amount of toys so you've got this huge infotainment screen it works very well you've got all the stuff you'd want in here you've got navigation uh, see how easy that is to set yeah searching yeah that's got that great perfect saved as home and then you've also got another digital screen here in the gauge cluster you do also have separate aircon controls so these aren't you know you don't have to dive into the screen to do things you've just got a temp control here blower control there all of the physical buttons and seat heater controls and a heated steering wheel very premium practicality you've got a nice big space here where you can put your phone you've got all of your charging ports here so there's a usb charger a 12 volt charger and your connection for your android auto or apple carplay you also got two cup holders and a nice big tray here which again you'd fit a phone in or maybe your wallet a colossal center console storage there under the armrest that's lovely and a nice big damped glove box as well you've also got space for a bottle of water in the doors and then further pocket space behind it and my favorite a sunglasses holder the seats themselves are lovely again it's perforated leather you've got nice cushioning in the side and a nice soft headrest as well everything about this car so far screams comfortable simple easy and convenient and let's see if that carries on on the drive Okay, so driving the Kia Soul EV and the simplicity and straightforwardness and ease of use of the interior definitely aligns with the simplicity, straightforwardness and ease of use of the driving experience. I'll start with the steering. It's incredibly light. Um, probably the lightest steering I've had in a car, in a modern car. It's, it's full uh, one finger mode. You can just finger on, do that do that do that obviously sublime for palming and to go along with that all of the controls really are, are fairly light the uh the the brake pedals light it's nice and progressive the throttle pedals light i just want to show you this i'm coming up to a speed bump and this car suspension is sublime so i'm going to go over this at 25 that's it that's all that happens and that's a speed bump that in most cars i'd be down below 15 miles an hour so yeah everything is easy and comfortable and feels nice and grown up actually there's small exterior dimensions going on with this vehicle but it feels kind of grown up and chunky it's got this raised driving position and um yeah it it, it feels bigger than it, it really is obviously it's heavy um it's got a 67 kilowatt hour battery uh, 64 usable kilowatt hours which is massive for this size of car that means you get a 280 mile range which again massive for this size of car there's not really anything else as compact as this offering that kind of range performance so as i've said 280 mile range wltp uh, kia and hyundai are both quite good about being or about having honest trip computers so right now I'm sitting on, well, let's see, 
if I go into my EV settings, it'll tell me my battery percentage exactly. I've got 61% charge, and it's telling me I've got 155 miles of range. All of the time I've had the car, that, that range indicator has been accurate. It's got 200-ish horsepower, 201 horsepower, 204 PS, however you want to measure it, um, and a 0 to 62 time of 7.8 seconds, which is both of those metrics, actually, a sort of hot hatchy, if anything. Obviously, similar power figures in the i20N that I reviewed uh, last month. This is not as fast as 60 because this is a heavier vehicle, but 7.8 seconds to 62, it's no slouch. And in sports mode, it really, it feels like it gets moving. In fact, I'm about to turn off down here. I'll flick it into, let's go into, that's normal, into sport, there we go. Well, I say flick it. Uh, the handling is obviously compromised by both the weight and the high side of the vehicle. But that is, that's really rather, wow. Yeah, and it's just that electric surge up to 60. It, um, there's nothing quite like the way an electric car accelerates. And even in a slow one, which I guess this is, um, it's not, <laughs> but I guess in terms of, you know, bonkers electric cars, this is a slow one. Even the way that this moves up to 60 miles an hour is really quite addictive. It's, it's, <laughs> it's terrible because this is the least efficient thing you can do in an electric car. If I slow back, I'll slow back down to, ooh, let's go down to 40 and then, and it's got enough force to put me back into my seat. You know, that's, it's good fun but yeah handling wise you've got soft suspension there's quite a bit of body roll um l more than you get in in a lot of the competitors and um and it means that you probably feel more uneasy about pushing this car hard than the chassis necessarily can handle it's front wheel drive so if you put your foot down hard off the line it can suffer from a bit of wheel spin uh, but I find that to be quite enjoyable personally. So technology, you get Kia's smart cruise control, which basically means you also get uh, lane departure warnings. Um, you get Kia's smart cruise control, which is radar cruise uh, combined with advanced lane keeping. It steers for you basically. You do have to keep your hands on the wheel while you're using it, obviously. It works really rather well though. I turned it, any time I've been on the motorway, I've turned it on, set it to generally 70, sometimes less if, if the traffic was heavy. But it just goes up to the car in front, it sits at a safe distance, and, and it'll take you around the corners, which it just makes motorway driving so relaxing. On roads like this, the lane departure warning that does beep at you, if I go over the line a bit, will it do it? No, don't think these lines are quite well drawn enough. But yeah, so it's got lane departure warning and it will beep at you on a country lane if you pass over the line when it gets narrow. You can turn it on and off, but you've got to do it every time, which isn't ideal. Along with your slightly swankier tech and your automated driver assist systems, you also get some, some nice sort of classic car tech. You get automatic wipers, you get automatic headlights. So it's got all the bells and whistles, um, as you would want for a car that's costing more than £35,000. Now, is it an SUV? Well, it's definitely giving off crossover SUV vibes from the driving position. I feel quite upright. Obviously, I can see right over the bonnet because it's nice and square. And I can see the corners of the vehicle as well. And the shape of this cabin also puts you in mind of an SUV. It definitely handles more like a crossover. It's not a hatchback. It's too tall. There's too much weight. Maybe the petrol powered one would feel more like a hatchback. But we don't get that in this country. We only get the uh, electric version. So as far as small SUV of the year, small electric SUV of the year goes, I can see it. I can see why they why they consider this to be an SUV. Um, it doesn't follow my key tenant of SUV-ness, which is four-wheel drive. So I would probably refer to it as a crossover. But I think, yeah, from inside, that is how it feels. When I look at it from the outside, the ground clearance 
and the space around the the visible suspension travel makes me think oh no it's a kind of mpv hatchback thing but the fact you're a bit more raised up than you would be in a traditional mpv i said yeah from the driver's seat it does feel more like a crossover and i do want to say for all my umming and ahhing about is this an suv and an mpv because of the exterior styling i want to say through all of that i re really like the way this car looks i've always liked the kia soul because uh, it's different they just looked at what is going on in that segment and they've gone well what can we do that isn't that and i like it i think it's very likable and it's very grown up and very mature and everything just is right everything's been done properly there is no shakes and rattles in here anything you can hear on camera is my own equipment stuff like these rattling around the actual car itself nothing silent incredible refinement obviously electric motor so nvh basically non-existent surprisingly square car no real wind noise problems either it's a, just a very well executed car very well executed ev and i think the problem the problem as far as i can see it not the problem but the thing is people walk into a kia dealership to look at one of these see the price for the nero is pretty much the same put on their i'm making a smart financial decision head and buy the nero instead but there are there are many many situations where you want a smaller car and this is that smaller car and i can't think of another electric car of this size that's better than this that i would choose over this no way we'll have to see what the mg4 is like of course but right now this is the one to beat as far as i'm concerned so with that said let's go back and conclude Okay, so summing up the Kia Soul EV, uh, first I want to make an honourable mention to the stereo. It's amazing. It's a Harman Kardon system. I forgot to talk about it, but also I can't really show it off on YouTube because of copyright. Um, but trust me, it's really good. I am a musician. Uh, <laughs> that makes me qualify, right? Um, but yes, the Kia Soul EV, it just does everything really rather well. It's got a sort of VW Golf vibe to it in that way everything's just kind of well executed um there are maybe a couple of points that could be better the front charging flat being a bit stiff but I, that might just be this model i don't know and maybe some people will have a problem with all the piano black plastic and the fact that some of it's a bit rougher around the dashboard uh but this interior is a lot nicer than most of the competition you get in a really really big battery for your money and i know it's a lot of money but i think this car is worth it so if you're thinking of buying a small electric car and you want one with decent range that's just really easy to live with uh i think the kia soul might be your best bet thank you so much for watching please remember to like comment and most importantly subscribe uh, you can find all of our social media links down in the description you can also find the links to all the ways to support us so we have a merch store I'm repping right now. We have a Patreon and we have channel memberships. Uh, again, all down in the description. Go there, click on something, follow us somewhere, do what you like. It's a free world, but we'll see you next time. <laughs>